So I have five really cool Windows apps for you that you can download for free and try right away. Shut up. That's the name of the first app. It's actually called Ueno Shut Up 10. It's an anti-spy tool for Windows. I mean, it's no secret that Microsoft collects your data in Windows 10 and 11. I did a video some time ago on how to improve your privacy by turning off some optional diagnostics. Now, an easier and more effective way to do this, though, is to use Oano Shut Up 10. It lets you decide which unwanted data collection should be deactivated. After you've downloaded it, using it is super easy. You don't even need to install anything. It has a very simple interface. You're going to see all these items from Windows, Edge, Office, and other apps that collect your information. The sliders on the left show you the current state. Green means your privacy is protected. Red means data is sent to Microsoft. On the right, you're going to see the recommendations by ONO. I wouldn't bother with the red or yellow icons because they could impact some potentially useful functions. The easiest way is to just apply the recommended settings in one go. Just click the drop down here for actions and select apply only recommended settings. And you should definitely create that system restoration point as is suggested here in case something goes wrong. What I encourage you to do is that instead of applying all the recommended settings, just go through the list yourself because there is really no one size fits all solution. For example, the settings for activity history and clipboard are all recommended to be turned off. Of course, there's some data storage going on here, especially when you have sync activated, you transfer your settings to the cloud. For some, this is for sure a no go. For me, though, I like this convenience. So the great part about this tool is that you get to make a conscious decision about how much convenience you need in exchange for sharing your information. In summary, it's a great free tool that supports both Windows 10 and Windows 11. Next up is ShareX. It's a screen capture utility that offers far more features than the Windows built-in snipping tool. It has the obvious capture functionality to take screenshots with various options like full screen, window, region, and scrolling capture. I mostly use region and you just need to select what you want to capture like this. Where ShareX really shines is the editor. After you capture the screen, you can make annotations, add text boxes, draw shapes, magnify objects, or add blur or pixelation to the capture. Another cool thing is to add steps if you want to give some instructions to the viewer. With every click, it will add a step. So you can say, do this first, then go here, and then finally click on this. When you're done with your changes, you can copy the image to the clipboard, save it locally, or share it by uploading it to a range of cloud services. You can also use ShareX to record your screen for a quick tutorial or to record a GIF. There are even more features included than I'm able to cover in this video, like an image editor, video converter, or a handy QR code creator. But before we wrap this up, I want to show you one more cool thing. With ShareX, you can also extract text from a picture or from a website. Just select what you want to extract and it's going to process the image online with OCR functionality. It's not perfect, but it does do a decent job. So as you can see, while ShareX has an older, very basic interface, it's packed with functionality. It also has a lot of customization options like keyboard shortcuts, application and task settings. It really pays off to spend some time with this app just to be able to get the most out of it. Most free VPN services are slower than the snails going through my garden. So I generally recommend spending the $10 per month or whatever it is to protect your privacy and your data on the web. Now, since we're covering free apps, one of the best free VPNs that we've come across is Privato VPN. It's based in Switzerland where the privacy of users is well protected. Now, Switzerland isn't part of any international surveillance agreements, at least not until now, which means that they don't need to keep any user logs. The free version comes with 12 global servers and you get 10 gigabytes of free data per month. It's not amazing, but among the free services, that's pretty good. And it's super easy to sign up. Probably its best feature is speed. Now for a free service, it's really impressive. And I didn't notice any download issues or lags while we were testing this. 
I personally use a paid service, but if you're interested in a VPN and don't want to spend anything, give Provido VPN a try. What do you do when you want to share a video with your friends or your family and it's just too big to send? You could use some online converter, but you know, it's pretty much annoying to upload this to the cloud and then download it again. Instead, a much better solution is to use Handbrake. It's an open source program that transcodes video files between just about every codec there is. I'm going to use Handbrake for this video file here, which is one of our recent videos. I'll just drag and drop the file in the source selection. The easiest way is to select one of the many presets in this panel here. I'm going to go with the default 1080p. Then choose where the output file should be saved to, click on encode, and that's it. More experienced users can also fully customize the output with these tabs here. This way you can rotate the video or manually crop the video. You can also apply effects or turn the video into black and white. On the summary tab, we're going to get a preview of how this is going to look like. There are more options to change the video encoder, change frame rates, add subtitle. When you're done with your selections, click on Start Encode. Depending on the video size and settings, this may take a while. You're going to see the progress down here. With our example, we were able to reduce the video size from 3.8 gigabytes to 149 megabytes. But if we use the preset for Gmail, for example, the size is reduced to 26 megabytes, which is so much easier to share this way. Okay, so if you ever need to compress a big video file or convert a video to a different format, check out Handbrake. The last app that we're gonna cover is a fun, small open source program called StreamWriter. It lets you play and record content from internet radio stations. This way you can listen to the tracks later or transfer them to an MP3 player. You can search from the thousands of radio stations available by using the dropdown for music genres on the side here. Or if you're looking for something specific, use the search box up here. Let's say I want to listen to Nashville FM. When you find the right station, a right click will give you some options. You can either play the stream or start recording it right away. You can also record many different stations at the same time. For better organization, add categories to group together stations. Like you could create a category for country and then drag the stations to this category. This not only looks cleaner, but you can also start recording all stations in that specific category with a single click. You can find all your saved songs when you click on this tab up here. Just double click to play the song. The scissor icon on the side shows that the file has been cut automatically like it cuts out any talking or any ads. A fun feature is also title search. Click on the button up here and enter the name of the song in the search box. I'm going to go with Gandhi Buddha. I haven't heard that one for a while. Hit enter and we get a list. That's the one I'm looking for. Now, I can't record it right away, but I can add it to my wish list. This way, StreamWriter will record the song automatically if it notices that it's being played on a station. You'll see the status of your wish list by clicking list in the toolbar. You can create your own personal music library this way with songs that are hard to come by. All tracks are saved in a folder on your computer. You can specify this in the settings. Click on file, settings, and click on file names. Up here, you're gonna see the folder for saved songs and you can change it by clicking on browse. There's some more options that you should check out. For example, under settings, you can define the default action for a double click for streams. There are also settings for automatic recordings that you should check out. Here you can define the minimum quality and the format for your recordings. Okay, so that's my list. I hope you'll find these apps useful. If you wanna check out my other video about free Windows apps, I've added it to the cards above. I also added the download links for the apps that I talked about in this video to the description box. If you have any other favorites, please share them with us in the comments below because some of these apps were actually based on your comments from our previous video. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'm going to catch you next time.